Their goal is to discover which of the various possible combinations of cup contents will impart the most force on impact. And speaking of the force, here's the Yoda of Soda. So there you have it, our potentially deadly styrofoam cup. Now, for the purposes of our experimentation, I'm going to want to know exactly how much energy this cup imparts to something it hits, whether it's empty or filled with different substances. How am I going to do that? With this, a load cell. This little button here can tell me when I hit it with something exactly how much energy is transferred from the object to the load cell. But here we got an object that's too big and a load cell that's too small, so I'm going to increase the surface area of my load cell by placing it between these two nice heavy steel plates. Now, when this cup hits this first steel plate, that will transfer the energy to the button and tell me exactly how much energy this potentially lethal cup might have. It's ready. With the force plate in place, the guys will be able to accurately compare the impact of each cup fired from the cannon. Off at a rakish angle, I like it. So this is how this works. We've got our specially made pressure tank with a built-in fast-acting valve. Now, when we open that valve, all that air comes out at high speed, heads straight down the barrel. Our cup comes out the end, hits this plate, pushes on the load cell. Bob's your uncle. So, Robert's your mother's brother. Every target needs a motivation. Yeah. And Jamie is the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> But before Jamie gets a face full of soda, 3D Jamie <laughs> wants to check the cannon is working with some alternative ammunition. Bet you've never seen a 100 mile an hour feather boa before. An interesting choice, and surely a world first. Ready for test fire number one. In three, two, one. <laughs> That thing's got a lot of kick to it. That's my new favorite toy. <laughs> so Fall Guys, what are we, testing myths about 80s TV shows? Ooh, can we do A-Team next? <laughs> yes and no. Yes, we can get to the A-Team, and no, we are not testing myths about 80s TV shows. We're actually gonna test the myths about falling, or more accurately, not falling. So you're talking about like the classic Hollywood scenario where somebody's hanging on to a high edge using nothing but their fingertips. Exactly. This sounds awesome. To cling on by your fingertips is a classic silver screen cliche. Apparently, in any action movie, the hero can hang on indefinitely. But are any of the many variations really viable? To find out, the team will take on two of the most common. First, can you really just hang on until help comes along? Then, hauling yourself into a helicopter. Is it fact or film fiction? You guys, I have the perfect place to test this. There's a fire training tower in Pleasanton. It's got ledges all around, easily accessible rooftop, and it's pretty tall. Well, as far as the hang time test goes, there's one thing I'd like to add, and that's edge thickness, and see how that affects how long you can hold on to. Okay, well, we can build something that clamps onto the ledge that we can easily adjust from four inches to half an inch. Then we can correlate hang time to ledge thickness. Well, since we're gonna be working from heights, it's gonna be pretty dangerous. So why don't we get a professional climber to come in? That way we'll be belayed. So if we do fall, no one gets hurt. And you know, we can use hand to see how well a professional does compared to us average Joes. What are we waiting for? So the team head on out to hang out at the perfect place to, you know, hang out. All right, now when we talked about this in the blueprint room, it seemed pretty straightforward. Whoa, this is high. I mean, we just grab onto an edge and see how long we can hang on. But now, standing on top of the 75-foot building, I'm wondering, is this really necessary? I mean, can't we just test this hanging off a door frame? Well, not really, because a key component of this myth is motivation. And hanging from a great height will ramp up the fear factor. But just in case that's not enough, here's a quick demo. So we've got the perfect building for experiment. The only thing that we're missing is adrenaline. Now, undoubtedly, when you're hanging on for your life, adrenaline is going to give you that little extra boost of oxygen and sugar that might help you hang on long enough for help to arrive. Now, just to get our juices flowing, we're going to demonstrate for you what would happen if something went horribly, horribly wrong with our old pal Buster. Look out below! Buster is falling from 70 feet. By the time he gets to the ground, he's going to be traveling at 45 miles an hour. But I mean, look at him right now. He actually looks pretty good. Oh, except for that. 